Hey everyone, it's Deja from Knit and Crochet Ever After, and today we are making the easiest shawl ever. This is the Twinkle Knit Shawl. It's a triangle shawl, as you can shawl, as you can see. This is the most simple, basic shawl, triangular shawl that you can make. It is straight knit stitching with a couple yarn overs, and that's it. It's garter stitch. It's a two row repeat. So the hardest part you're going to have is just the garter tab at the beginning, but I'm going to show you some easy ways to make it not so tough. So download the pattern below, grab 500 yards of DK weight yarn and five millimeter needles, and we'll get started. So to start off this shawl, we are going to do a garter tab. And you're probably like, why do we need a guard tab? Why can't we just cast on the stitches we need and begin the shawl? So the reason being is right here in the center, this is where the shawl begins. And then it works its way out and creates this triangle that I'll have to pull up here because it's really big and you can't see it. So this spot here is the garter tab. If we just cast on and start working our project, we're going to have this empty spot when we have a garter border. So you can see we have a garter border all the way across. So if we don't do this garter tab, it's going to look a little weird. So we want to make sure that we're doing it correct so that we get this nice border along the top edge. So I'm going to show you how to do that garter tab now and then we're going to move on to our setup row which is super easy. We're just going to throw four stitch markers in there to keep track and then we have two row repeats till the end. The great thing about this is that you can make it as big or as little as you want. So I had 500 yards of yarn and I just kept going until I ran out of yarn. Your biggest concern is that just make sure you have enough yarn for your bind off row. So you don't want to have to unknit because once you get down to the end row, which is it's made into a triangle. So as you're working, you're working along these two triangle edges and you're up to hundreds of stitches. So it's not going to be fun if you run out of yarn on that last row and have to unknit a whole row before that so you can bind off correctly. So give yourself some room to be able to have enough yarn to do that bind off. But definitely customize it. You know, you can go even bigger than this. This is quite big. Or you can go smaller. You can make it like a little neckerchief. You know, this has tons of room. I'm trying, I can pull this up higher, but I don't want to hit my mic because then it'll be loud. Um, but you can see I have a ton of room. This thing is like going down to my belly button. So it's huge with just 500 yards. So definitely at least 500 if you want to really volume. Volume, volume, volume. Voluminous. <laughs> I can't say it. You know what I mean? Volume and extra volume. Voluminous. I can't say it right now. I help. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you want very big, like lots of yarn, just get a lot of yarn. <laughs> but let's go start the garter tab and our rows, and then we'll come back to talk about blocking. Okay, so to make our garter tab cast on, we are going to cast on three stitches to begin with. So um, don't mind those stitch markers, we're going to use those in a minute. But this, these are, not this, um, these needles are the ones that I actually used for the shawl. And you'll notice that it's got a cord attached. I like these much better than the straight needles. It just, you run out of room with straight needles unless you have really, really long ones. So I highly recommend to um, invest in these 40 inch for shawls. Um, if I did not say, we are working seven rows <laughs> of garter. So we're just knitting for seven rows and that is going to give us enough room to pick up some stitches, which is what we're going to do in a second. This is going to be the hardest part of the shawl. So once you get past this, it's smooth sailing. So some people do six rows. I do seven. It's just a little easier to pick up your stitches. So do whatever you like if you're 
if you've done garter tabs before, um, you'll have a way that you like to do them. Oops. So I'm going to zoom through and get through seven rows and we'll come back and pick up some stitches to begin our shawl. Okay, here is row seven and you'll see what I mean with extra room because normally you're going to grab these little ridges and if you stop on row six it's a little bit harder like this ridge is very pronounced now over here away from the row so you can see it easily so we're going to grab the bumps from the last stitch we're going to work to the first stitch so we need three so we're going to grab three bumps and we're just turning our work so we were facing this way we're just turning it 90 degrees because we have to pick up some stitches on this side and we have to pick up some stitches on this side to get going so remember how we made i showed you where that garter tap shows up so i picked up three stitches just using my needle now i'm going to knit these off so i'm going to knit one knit two knit three so now I have six stitches on my needle I need nine so I'm going to turn again and now I'm on my foundation row so here's the foundation row I hate picking up stitches on this side because it's a little difficult I'm going to pick up three stitches on this side the cast on row and you're just going to kind of it's these are funky because it's the cast on so you just want to find three loops that you can get into where they will give you room to work because it's not really going to be visible at the end when you get going so just find loops that you can pull out enough to be able to knit into them so got so no that one's split hold on sometimes if you pull them apart you can find a better way let me find a way oh and i'm losing all my stitches as i'm doing it <laughs> don't fall apart okay I got them back all right so I got my three on here now I'm gonna knit these off so that I have nine stitches to begin with and the hard part is done oh made it so now we're ready for our setup row okay now for our setup row we are placing stitch markers now so these are going to come into play so that we don't have to count stitches or try to figure out what to do next these stitch markers are going to be our guide so we're doing three stitches on both ends for borders um, in between all of our increasing so we're going to knit three to begin with and i missed it <laughs> so one two and three and then we're going to place a stitch marker and this is to remind us that after those three we need to increase so we're going to do a yarn over then we're going to knit in our next stitch then we're going to do another yarn over so we always do a yarn over before we slip our next stitch marker so we're adding another stitch marker to remind us to do a yarn over before it this is going to be our middle spine stitch right here and then we're going to place another stitch marker so there's always going to be one stitch in between these two stitch markers through the entire thing so this next stitch marker marker is to remind us to do a yarn over then we're going to knit one then we're going to do a yarn over again because i only have three stitches left and place another stitch marker and then we're going to knit those three. So this will make more sense on our next row after. So this is a wrong side row, even though it's a garter. So both sides are right or wrong, but our even rows are gonna be just knitting across. So nice and easy. So we just knit and slip our markers as we go. So this is a good indication when you're working if you're you know watching tv or something you should have yarn overs next to all of your stitch markers so you should be looking for those on your wrong side row in case you forget to do one and i do that all the time so it looks different from a regular stitch the regular stitch has the bump the yarn over is just this big old hole so make sure you're paying attention to that so that you know that you haven't missed any here's one here here's my spine slip 
another yarn over, regular stitch, another yarn over, slip, and then three. So that's it. Those are our two rows. So let's go over that again. We're just knitting. So we're going to knit three. These are our edge stitches, so we do not do yarn overs on the side of our edge stitch. We are going to slip that. Then we're going to yarn over because we want the holes next to our border. Then we're going to knit to right before our next stitch marker. So you'll see the instructions state that. So we're coming here. We're doing all the way till we hit this stitch marker. Then we're going to yarn over and slip to make the holes in between our spine. Knit our spine, slip. We need to create our other hole. So we're going to yarn over, knit to the next marker yarn over to create our hole next to our border. So we're doing four yarn overs every single right side row. Then when we turn, we're going to make sure that we're paying attention. We're doing four increases every right side row. Then we're just knitting the back side. So we're looking for those yarn overs to make sure that we didn't miss any. If you missed, you can either create a yarn over in place by pulling up a loop from below because that's basically what you got. Or you can unknit and go back to create that yarn over. But this is it. This is everything. And you'll notice that what we're doing up here is our points and what's happening down here where our garter tab was originated is the actual straight edge. So if I come over here, you'll see that now here's our straight edge and our shawl is getting bigger this way. So that's it. You're just gonna go with those two rows back and forth. Once you get to the length you want, you're gonna finish with a wrong side row. So you're gonna do one more increasing and then you're gonna bind off knit wise to make it easy on you, which is on the wrong side and you'll be done. So it's an easy bind off. It's just a knit bind off and you're set. So we're going to go talk about blocking now. Okay, you finished your shawl and hopefully you've woven in your ends and I want to talk about blocking really quick. So if you finish and you find that your shawl, the stitches aren't quite consistent, it's not quite the size you want, you wish it was a little bigger, try blocking. It is amazing what blocking will do. It can help even out your stitches and it can help the yarn grow. So if you haven't heard of blooming before, when you stick especially wool yarn in water, it will bloom and it will release from the fibers and it will grow. And the length, the extra length and width that I got on this shawl was amazing. I probably gained like, I don't want to say like a full foot, <laughs> you know, like it's a foot in hair. No, what's an inch, you know, when you're at the hair dresser and say cut an inch and they like take this much off. So I'm going to say it's like three inches of hair dresser. <laughs> so probably like a foot, um, but it really grew. It really helps with making all of your stitches nice and even. They're very consistent now. I had a couple spots. I still have a couple little spots where it's a little bit bigger than the rest, but overall, like all of my stitches look pretty uniform. I'll come a little closer so you can see they're all quite uniform and look the same, and they did not when I first finished, <laughs> so it does help quite a bit. Um, throw it in water, let it sit for 10 minutes, squeeze it out, and then lay it flat. If you have blocking mats and pins, I have links in the description that, to the ones that I love. Totally helps out, but not necessary. Throw it on carpet. You can stick some sewing pins, you know, yeah, carpet pad. <laughs> It'll stick to it enough till it dries. Um, the best thing to do though is like, I, after I squeeze it out, I stick it on a towel, I roll the towel up with it in there, and then I stand on the towel 
and I stand and I sit there and I squish it and go back and forth and that really sucks up like tons of water from it and then I lay it out and it's usually dried by morning. So if you're having trouble, like your stuff doesn't dry for days, get clean towels, throw it in there, wrap it all up and step on it. Use your body weight to suck all that water out. It totally works. So I highly recommend blocking. So that is it. That's the shawl. It's super easy, super fast. I wanna see what you make. So go make some, add stripes, do whatever you want. Tag me, please. Tag me on Instagram. Tag me on Facebook. I would love to see what you make and show me your creations and your, you know, your imagination. <laughs> so this is the Twinkle Shawl. I am Deja and thank you for watching.